Evelyn, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about overcoming darkness of the season of the heart with prayer. I don't know about your disciplines of prayer, but I think of this season of Advent for a few weeks before the winter solstice as a time to pray. Uh, some have said that Advent in the traditions of the church was somewhat similar to Lent, just a shorter season, a time to reflect and to contemplate and to pray longer. I don't know if you've ever taken a treat, retreat, but that can be a good way to get away from a day alone or with others and to just refresh yourself in being still and having that sense of knowing God. Or perhaps taking a day of just doing kind, selfless deeds to others without any expectation of reward. Just do it gently and feel the sense of lift, the sense of peace that you will experience inside. Advent has actually been called a, a time of a holiday, holiday season. It means uh, holy days originally, but sometimes we think of holidays not necessarily as becoming more mystical reminded or reflective, but being more active and more outwardly rather than understanding that it can be a, an inward, kind of an esoteric experience. What does prayer mean though? One of the most uh, used words in, in scriptures, tefillah, from the old Hebrew Bible, means to just to observe oneself. It's used more than any other word in the Bible, and it speaks of just self-judging, self-reflexing, self-observation. In our baptisms, and I have taught people often, we are forgiven. We are love in our essence. We're one with God. We're one with divinity with the great maker of the universe who made us as him or herself, who loves us and we're love. And so we observe ourselves in prayer by saying, am I forgiven or am I carrying around guilt or am I carrying around anger toward others? Can I let it go? It's sort of like a time when we say, oops, I failed again and I ask for forgiveness and I extend it to others. In that old prayer, forgive us our sins as we forgive others their sins or their debts. It starts with ourselves first. If I can't forgive myself, then I can't forgive you. I can't forgive others. I just project it out onto people. So it's a time when we examine ourselves. I was down to my hometown Sherman a few days ago, staying over with my mother, and I took her into the town for a few errands and while she was getting her hair done I stopped at the store and on the way out I saw a man who was my classmate and he had missed our 50th reunion a few months ago last summer so I said oh where were you we missed you and he said well I wasn't there but he looked pretty nice and pretty clean he asked me what I was doing and I told him that I was retired but still doing some speaking and working for a small congregation he said, well, we would love to have you come to our church here in Sherman. They have what I would call a community church. And so later when I got back, I was telling my mother and her caretaker that, that this man had invited me to come to uh, his church and to be the minister. And they said, oh, that man, you know, he had such a bad reputation after he graduated. And I, I knew he had. He used to run quite a, a well-known, lively little tavern in town. But he looks so nice now, and now he's a member of the church. They said, well, he's not just a member, he's on the board. And he's driven out several people who wouldn't want to be in the same church as that reprobate. Well, I thought for a moment, and I asked, well, what sin is it that we've ever done that the Almighty God couldn't forgive? You see, it's so easy to judge others and realize that maybe they confess their sins and they have been forgiven as much as we have. They experience that. See, when we observe, we observe more ourselves. And the other thing we observe in prayer is we have it all, right? Gary Zukoff, that Vietnam Green Beret veteran turned mystic, says that we ought to consider that in our divinity we have won the, the largest lottery ever. Some of us dream of winning the lottery. I read the other day a woman said, if I could win the lottery right now, I would have somebody come in and do all these Christmas decorations and then come back and take them all down the first of the year. 
Well, you've already won it. Spiritually, you have everything. You have it in this life, every day, every second, every moment. And prayer just helps us to remember it. And when we forget it and feel like we're running short and we'll starve and, and there won't be enough, we just take another deep breath and relax and wait for peace. And whether we live or whether we die, we always have everything. We have eternal life. It's like the Buddhist that came to America and went to a, a restaurant one day and he ordered a sandwich and they said, what would you want on it? And he said, well, make me one with everything. That's what we have in our faith. That's what we have in our reality, in our essence, in the spirit, unseen, untouched, but known on that deeper level. We have it all. And with that, we observe not only that, and that we are forgiven, but that we are staying in the holy instant of right now. In our observations, we can ask, where do our worries come from? Where do our regrets come from? Usually it's the past or the future. We get caught in those things we can't let go that were done to us in the past or that we had done to others. Or we're all worried about the future. What will I have? What will I wear? Will I have enough? That's, that's missing the instant now. Those are not real. Those are just memories and worries about a time that hasn't yet come. The only real time is the instant right now. That's when people get worried. You see them almost instinctively. They'll stop and what do they do? They take a deep breath. Hmm. They come back to the now and they feel more relaxed. In the darkness and the worry of this season, we pray and we say, where am I? Come back to the now. Come back to this moment. You may have heard of that famous writer, Eckhart Tolle, that scientist, mathematician that had that awakening experience and wrote that popular book called The Power of Now. It's all about staying in the now. Like the mystics from past ages have written about but we find ourselves going to sleep so quickly. All of our worries, all of our regrets come from the past to the future, not staying in the now. Mark Twain once said that I have lived a long life with many troubles, but now at the near the end of my life, most of them have never happened. Prayer, overcoming the darkness, realizing that it's basically judging, observing ourselves and not others, becoming thankful for all that we've been given right now in this holy instant and seeking to live it out in peace for ourselves and for others. May you observe that during these holy days, taking time to prepare for the great celebration through times of meditation and listening and coming into the holy present. God bless you.